Hi, it's Rob Redding, America's Independent Voice, and this is Redding News Review Unrestricted Podcast. This is Redding News Review Unrestricted. I'm Rob Redding, America's Independent Voice. Give you the press news you need to know. This show, talk about this show, they fear. This is Redding News Review Unrestricted. Welcome to the program. This is the weekend review. But this is not your typical weekend review. It's not. It's not your typical weekend review. I want you to understand something. White people like to dictate to you. White liberals like to dictate to you. Joe Biden. We saw that this week, right? Joe Biden dictating to what he believes blackness is. And then you have Donald Trump. He wants to dictate to you. Last night on Twitter, what does he do? He takes to Twitter and he says that looters are thugs and that they will be met with guns. That's what he says. We saw protests all over this country last night and the night before that and the night before that. And we see that whites want to dictate, but the dictation is over, and that's what they don't get. That's what they, white people, let me be clear, don't get. Dictation is over. We're no longer taking dictation now. As I said yesterday, which you will hear again today, as I said yesterday, the protest should go forward, and they should do whatever they need to do to make sure that they leave an impression on those that they are hurting and that they're tired of hurting. Let's go through the news. First of all, Donald Trump wants to dictate to us and say that we're thugs. Mr. President, we're not thugs. Twitter correctly said, look, this is a threatening tweet, especially when he goes as far as to say, these looters will be met with guns. They didn't take it down, and I'm glad they didn't. And this is what I posted on the socials, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. I want people to see that Trump is an autocrat, a racist autocrat, just like this mayor, the Southern mayor, I put it on the website, this Southern mayor who says, I don't see anything wrong with what happened. You, you see it, it's on the website, it's right there. It's required reading. Make sure you're reading the website, make sure you're subscribing, readynewsreview.com. This racist ass mayor, I don't see anything wrong with the way George Floyd was treated. All right. I don't see anything wrong with the way it all went down. That's just autocracy. And what we're seeing is the heavy hand of government. Another example of the heavy hand of government is when CNN is broadcasting. And I know exactly what happened because I've been a reporter for so long. The police told them they didn't want them filming them. That's what happened. And CNN was told to move and they didn't move. And so he started the live shot because he wanted some action. He didn't just want to do a live shot with smoldering buildings behind him. And so he decides that he's going to put the cops in frame. They didn't want to be in frame. So they came and they arrested him and the entire CNN crew and then later released them. They said a big embarrassment for the state, etc. But this is the heavy hand of government. This is autocracy. That's exactly what it is. This is a dictatorship, and that's what these people are railing against. What has been exposed in this is Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar, who has been one of those people who has been considered for vice president and is being considered currently for vice president. And I told you when she dropped out, the day she dropped out, this whole incident where a black man died and she failed to pursue those that killed him. That's why it comes as no shock to me that she decided not to prosecute these officers when she had the opportunity, when this one officer responsible for killing George Floyd had 18, too many to mention, 18 different complaints against him that were not followed up on. Listen to me, were not followed up on. Then this morning, you've got people on social media, this is a protest, this is not a protest. The picture that says this is a protest is Martin Luther King marching pre peacefully, right? Through the street. This is not a protest. People taking refrigerators and what have you. Let me tell you something. I don't dictate to people who have complained 18 times about an officer how they should behave when said officer kills someone in front of our own very eyes. Time for dictation is over. It's over. Time for dictation from white folks, whether on the right or the left, is over. 
It's over. Joe Biden would have you believe, who's considering Amy Klobuchar, that the only way to be black is to vote for him. Now, he still has walked this back and said, that was a cavalier response. I shouldn't have said that. We covered that earlier this week. You can go back to those shows. I'm not going to play it right now. Don't have to, don't need to. What I want you to understand is that that is whites dictating to us what they believe we should be doing, who we even are. This is the same Joe Biden who in the past, who has said to us that, you know what, they're going to put your ass in chains if you don't vote for a Democrat. But he's no different. No different, especially if he puts Klobuchar in office as his vice president. What is interesting to me is that so many blacks are willing to forgive Joe for what he said last week, forgive the fact that he is really at his best, just a lukewarm Donald Trump. And they hope that things change just by putting him in. Sister said early on Facebook this week, we covered this. She said, I am so tired of being caught between a rock and a hard place. Here's the thing. Stop being tired. Stop being tired of being in between a rock and a hard place and stop doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Joe Biden said earlier this week, if I were president or when I'm president, I'll give some money to the local jurisdictions and I'll make sure our Justice Department really vigorously examines these types of behaviors that happen with the police. The problem is Joe Biden was the vice president with someone who was president who investigated with the Justice Department, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, and guess what happened to those officers from the Justice Department? Absolutely nothing. Not a damn thing. So I expect more of the same. Look, folks, 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 listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. White folks want to dictate to you. Even some black folks want to dictate to you how to protest. They want to dictate to you of what is a fitting protest. But I want to remind you of something, okay? With all the violence that we've seen and all the violence that we're still going to see, it's breaking out all over the place, especially with Donald Trump talking about how he's going to shoot people on sight. This is what an autocracy looks like. And when you have people piling on like Southern mayors, they say, I don't see anything wrong with what happened. And a Joe Biden S figure that comes in who's looking at a Klobuchar for a vice presidency when she is one of the people responsible for this cop being out there and killing George Floyd in the first place. And he himself having problems trying to dictate to black people what they should be doing, who is actually black when he isn't black himself is absolutely positively insulting. I'm sick and tired. See, I'm not just sick and tired. Mm. I'm not just sick and tired of being dictated to, but I am also sick and tired of every single time something like this happens, people want to tell us how to feel, even who to be, even who is black. And if we don't adhere to what their insane arguments are, that we're going to get shot down like dogs in the street, like dogs. This is what America looks like in 2020. And I don't like it. As a matter of fact, Kobe Bryant is much better off given the fact that he is dead. And 23,000 plus black folks that died as a result of coronavirus are better off because they haven't seen the likes of this and living in this type of oppressive system with no hope of real change, no hope of real systemic change, even under a new president coming into office, should he win? A rock in a hard place? It's not even a good way to put it. It's called absolute, complete, and total tyranny. So let me give you some examples of the reason why I say that what we're seeing and the dictation that they are giving to us and that they're telling us is important and we should adhere to unless we're going to get shot, killed, or hurt. 
is bullshit. It's utter and complete and total bullshit. I'll give you two examples. One, and I happen to be a member of the LGBTQ plus community, is Stonewall. The Stonewall riots, riots are now celebrated every year. Coming up this weekend, we will go into June. June 1st is Pride Month. You wanna know why? Because of the Stonewall riots, white men absolutely revolted against the police. And they have a parade as a result of it. Every year, it has morphed into what has been called the pride festivities. They have fucking rainbows and unicorns and some more shit. I've been in the parades in New York City. The 50th anniversary was of world pride was just last year in New York City. And you know what? They have a parade. They celebrate the fact that they kicked the police's ass. They kicked the police's ass. They burned shit, ripped shit up, because guess what? They were tired of having their foot literally on the necks of their community by the police. They were tired of it. And that was people that looked like them. What did Harvey Milk say? Harvey Milk, gay politician out in California who was assassinated he said i want you to call all your relatives i want you to call he told gay men i want you to call them i want you to come out to them because what is happening right now is other than what is happening is people are saying that these faggots this this faggots that they need to know that you their brother their cousin their uncle their father is a gay man and that they are also calling you that and that will change their perspective what I'm saying to you is is that the reason why folks dictate to us is because they're not us they want to talk about racism and how it doesn't exist but the moment that we talk about coronavirus coming through killing a hundred thousand people while the president sits his fat ass on a golf course on a golf course during all of this, he sits his fat ass on a golf course while 100,000 people have died as a result of coronavirus. And people are marching in states to go back. People say, well, why do they have white supremacist signs? Why do they have flags and white supremacist fat flags? And why do they have Confederate flags that they're flying? I'm glad you asked that question. The reason why they have it is because they want a white supremacist superstructure that returns, that comes back into being, that becomes what it used to be. They want the old days back. That's what Make America Great Again is all about. So all white people know how to do at that point is to separate themselves from us, the people that built all the shit that we're just now tearing down, that we're just now burning, that I argue that we should have been upset enough back with Aubrey's death back with Breonna Taylor's death and some more deaths that you don't even know the names of the people. Back when 23,000 people, black people, died as the result of coronavirus, we covered earlier this week, we should have been ripping shit down, not just down on one knee, Colin Kaepernick, but should have been just ripping shit down, tearing shit down with the vengeance, unapologetically. But the reason why they're sitting up there and they're talking about white power, white this, and they get their guns on state house capitals, and now they want to lambast us for ripping down those state house capitals in our anger that we built as slaves, many of us, is because they want their whiteness back. They want their good livelihood back, a livelihood that we will never know unless we take that TV, unless we take that... That, that refrigerator, unless we take that stereo, I don't give a fuck what the protesters take. More has been taken from us than anything else. And it's us versus them. Because they don't see themselves as us. And that's why Harvey Milk said to gay men, you need to call your relatives and let them know that you are also the nephew of a faggot. You are the father of a faggot. 
you were married to a faggot. All those nasty things that you say about people, you're also saying about someone you know and you say you love. Problem is, white folks don't love black folks. As a matter of fact, white folks want black folks to go away. Go back to where you came from. So let me give you that exam second example. That second example that I, I promised you. Oh, this is a good one. You ready for this? The second example of all of those people that says, oh, you can't go take that. You can't go steal that. These are the same people that went out and had a Boston Tea Party that they commemorate every single year. Throwing the teas. It wasn't they tea. Wasn't they tea. Throwing the tea into where? The water. And saying, no taxation without what? Representation. Okay? Same thing that these black folks are saying. We tired. We tired. We are tired. You know, Prince had an album. It was called Musicology. And I remember a track <laughs> on there. And he said, he said, your thousand years up. We tired, y'all. Now, Prince been dead. Prince been in the grave along with Kobe, and 23,000 people dead from coronavirus. He's been dead. He's not coming back. Michael Jackson's not coming back. As a matter of fact, they're probably better off in the grave right now than being right here and seeing all the shit that's going on that you and I are having to go through. Here's the point. The point is this. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, what do we do? Do we sit here and we get dictated to? How tired do we get? How tired do we really get? See, some of y'all are just tired just on the political party plantation of Trump. So let me continue to expand the question. I might not have the answer, but I can expand the question. Because sometimes, as we talk about in the academy, problematizing the issue is more important than having the answer. We need to know the problem. The only way we get to a solution is to know the problem. Because the other side of the coin is Joe Biden. And he wants to tell you how to be black. And he's the one who's considering Amy Klobuchar as a vice president. The same Amy Klobuchar who's responsible for the mess that we're seeing right now in Minnesota. That's reverberating throughout cities. And now they want to tell us how to act. They want to tell us if we don't get in line, guess what? They're going to shoot us because we're thugs. They. Joe Biden included. Just wait to see how long it takes him to say, you know, the protesters are wrong. He's madder than hell right now at Donald Trump. And Donald Trump and Twitter and Joe Biden can have their little war. I have no fucking concern about any of that shit. What I do concern myself with is the problem and what the solution is. And the solution is what we right now need to be focused on. The solution is we ourselves. We are beautiful selves, our beautiful black selves, loving the skin that we're in, even when others do not. We don't get our Harvey Milk moment where we get to tell our family members, guess what? I'm black, so therefore you're black too. We don't get that because white folks know, and I talk about this in my book, Why Black Lives Matter. They know that they are from us. They know they're out of Africa, but now they have convinced themselves and even some of us that they're better. And so we go chasing and sniffing after their ass as being boss. That's what Malcolm X said. White doesn't just mean white in America. The problem is, is that white means boss. And that's the problem with white supremacy. That's the problem with segregation. That's the problem with subjugation. That's the problem with the stratification of groups in this country that we live in right now, in this country, in this century that we're in as we cross over into 2020. And it's still the problem. Yes, it's still the issue. And every single time we revolt, whether it's Stonewall, or whether it's the Boston Tea Party, they're going to pretend like those examples don't apply to us because that's them and we're lesser than. And even some black folks will go along with this thought and this theory. I've seen some of them on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Oh, you know what? That's not protesting. Look, Martin Luther King, loving the death, 
literally and figuratively, love him in death, talked about nonviolence, and he got shot down, what, violently. That's why what I said yesterday is still the true today. That's why I'm going to replay what I said yesterday, because it's still the truth today. And that is any time you say that there is a violation, listen to me, listen to me, if you don't listen to anything else, with all these people that are trying to correct us, whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, tell us how to be black, tell us that if we are black, we're going to get shot because we're thugs. And consider racists that let this racist ass cop off the hook for vice president. Listen to me. Anytime you say there is a violation, anytime you say that you, yourself, are being oppressed, get your foot off my neck, literally, get your leg, get your knee off my neck, you are screaming violation, which is violent to most people, even black people. Remember, there are a lot of black people that weren't with Martin Luther King. A lot of black people that had problems with Martin Luther King because he was a rebel rouser. He was whipping white folks into a frenzy through his marches. He was making these white people agitate against them. And he wanted to show this agitation every single chance he got on the national news to show that they were locking him up, to show the actual vitriol that was coming at these nonviolent protesters. And some black folks said that just isn't the way. And it was all nonviolent. He never threw a stick or a stone, but yet he was stoned and he was killed as a result of it. And they're going to kill every single body that does the same exact thing. So you might as well do what? Be yourself. Be yourself or find yourself by yourself. Revolt in the way that they revolted at Stonewall and, and the Boston Tea Party and other tea parties that white folks have held in this country and other countries and disrupted and and bombed and and done wars against see i'm not going to tell people that are living in an area that they are wrong for behaving in the way that they're behaving because i don't know what they're going through in that area but i do know this while i don't have the answer i do know what it's like to be a black man i do know what it's like to literally have the police called on you to try to get you in trouble, to try to get you in a situation where you die in a hell of bu bullets or you, you're you beaten to death because of the color of your skin or you're taken to jail as a result of the color of your skin. I do know what it's like to be in a situation where a white woman in Central Park calls the police trying to get you in trouble or a white man in Minnesota, Minneapolis says you don't belong at a gym because of the color of your skin because Negro, you can't possibly, nigga, you can't possibly afford to exercise with me. So I'm going to call the police. This happens over and over again in American society. And I'm sick and tired of it. And like I said, the person who is dictating, dictating to us, has no, the oppressor who is dictating to us, has no say in how we retaliate against the harm that has been caused to our community. We react in the way we see fit. We are the answer now. We don't look to our oppressor for validation in the way we protest. At least I don't. Maybe you do. Maybe you're waiting for the okay and the green light. If you are, you're waiting for the okie dokie. Because anytime you say anything, they believe that you're violent. Anytime you look at them the wrong way, they believe that you're violent. Anytime you even think the wrong way, and if it's not their way, they believe that you're violent. And some black folks go right along with them. And guess what? Shucking and jive and talking about massa this, massa that. We sick? Massa, I'm going to lick your boots. Ah, thank you so much for letting me eat just a little bit. Thank you so much for my little job and my little sub suburb where I know you don't really want to live next to me. And you don't want my son marrying your daughter. And you just want to see me play basketball. Nigga running up and down the court. Quarter, just want to see me 
catch a football or what have you, but you don't want to see me beat your son or your daughter out for Harvard or Yale or any other place like that. And then when I get there, you want to discriminate against me. And if I'm Michelle Obama, you want to move out because I came, I, I came into the same dorm you're in. I don't want you in my space, nigga. I don't want to look at you. Go back to Africa. I didn't come from Africa, sir. I was born here with you, but I still love you anyway, Massa. Massa, we sick? I'll tell the other niggas to be quiet. I'm not going to tell the other niggas to be quiet and sit down. I'm not going to dictate to the other niggas to quiet down and relax. Just don't steal the television. Just sit up there and protest and sing We Shall Overcome. We tried that. Our leader was assassinated. Just words got him assassinated. Not bullets or guns or anything else. The mere threat of being black in this country is enough to get you killed. The showing up of being black in this country is enough to get you killed. They know it, and we know it if we're honest. If we're honest with we ourselves, that's the reason why. I'm not taking dictation from Donald Trump. I'm tearing up the playbook. I'm not taking dictation from Joe Biden. I'm tearing up the playbook. You can keep taking dictation from Massa if you want to. You can keep looking for validation from Massa if you want to. But I'm going to warn you of something. I'm going to warn you of something. That at the end of the day, your oppressor will never give you your freedom. Harvard University, critical race theory. Dr. Derek Bell was right. He said very clearly, you cannot build a better society when you are black upon the back of the old framework. You have to tear it down and start all over again. And that's why I said what I said yesterday. And I stand by what I said yesterday about protesting and my belief in the protest that we are seeing. Black folks have been way too patient. Way too patient, way too patient, way too patient. We have seen deaths. Thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens of dozens, and we've been way too patient. And I'm tired of us being patient and complacent. Good day, good day to you. As cities burn because of George Floyd's death, more cities should be on fire. More people should be held accountable. That's what I'm telling you. There's one man dead. There's another man injured as a result of the killing of George Floyd. But more should be dead and more should be injured because we should be incensed about what has happened in this country. Whether it's been coronavirus or the virus of the police, the cops, those are the people that are aiming their guns at us and just deciding to go back to work and deciding that we don't matter. This all comes, all of this comes as we learn that more than 23,000 black people are dead this morning as the President of the United States nearly refused to address any of these deaths yesterday. Just yesterday, we crossed the 100,000 mark, the 100,000 mark, and I have a report on the website, on the website that says that 100,000 plus people are dead, 23% of them are black people. We're only 13% of the population. 13% of the population, yet 23% of the deaths. So why is it that no one cares about nearly a third of these deaths being black people and they want to go back to work? Well, that's because we live in a society of systemic racial oppression. Let's not forget the reason why black people should be marching in the streets and angry. The same reason that we saw whites deciding to use effigies, most recently of the Kentucky governor hanging in his front lawn if he didn't reopen the state. Or how about those images in Michigan where protesters took guns, guns along with hateful signs and Confederate flags into the state house 
of that state's government. And we saw these types of protests all over America. When is enough enough? It wasn't enough that they killed Aubrey in Brunswick, Georgia, and tried to justify it. Still, black folks stay quiet. We found out about other deaths, like Breonna Taylor's and other deaths that have not made big news, and threats of death and calls made to the police, some of them in the very city where George Floyd passed away on camera. And those were two, yes, caught on camera here in Central Park in New York City with a young lady who was raining about her pet who decided to call the police and could have nearly killed a black man as a result of her phone call. In a gym in Minneapolis, we saw a man call the police on two black people who were there working out. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. These happen every single day. Microaggressions, they're called. But black folks have largely stayed quiet. Stay quiet through all of it, and we shouldn't have. And now, now we see the manifestation of the protests. We see on social media people who have had enough. It's not just, I would argue, about George Floyd's death. That's just the tip of the iceberg. All of these things have gone to the angst that we are seeing in America. But the problem is, is that we've waited so long to address them. We've waited so long to talk about them at this point that it's just all boiled over. And now we see the protest. You have the owner trying to say, oh, well, I am sorry. I called the police. My employee called the police. I didn't know they were going to kill him. But this is the issue. Time and time again, when blackness shows up, it is disruptive. When black men go into the room, reason walks out. And instead of this being diffused at the level of saying, hey, look, this is a bad bill. You can't buy anything with it here. You have to leave, take the bill with you. The cops were called. And the cops kill George Floyd. But that's because that's how our system is. And that is what people are finally fed up about. But I argue, right, that it should not have taken this long for people to be fed up. When Aubrey and Taylor died, people still weren't fed up enough. When whites walked in to state houses with guns saying, we're going to step over more than 20,000 black bodies to reopen states, we sat silent and said nothing. Over and over again, we've accepted microaggression after microaggression, and we have said nothing, and we have stayed quiet, and we've been the good Negro. And now it's time for the naughty Negro, which I talk about in Not a Nonviolent Negro, How I Survived Obama, my best-selling book. And that is not to accept we're sorry, keep kicking their ass until they get it. Keep kicking until they understand your hurt and your pain and what they have done to you, us, our community. Do it over and over and over again until they get it, until they get it into their thick skulls. It's the only thing they understand until cities burn, until cities are burned down to the ground, will they get the hatred that you feel for being hated so much for just appearing in commonplace society. This is the tension of racism. It's going to be a very, very long summer, and it's just getting started with no end in sight. They're not going to stop killing us. They're not going to stop walking over our dead bodies to go back to work until we make them understand that we will demand respect. This is why I've said over and over again that I'm not a nonviolent Negro, that I'm unapologetic about the fact that I believe 
that violence solves problems. This morning, it has the attention of everybody, including the President of the United States, who made a comment last night while he was trying to watch the launch of a rocket man mission putting tourists in space. I give as much credence to this in the Justice Department as I did when Barack Obama was head of the Justice Department. I don't. The fact is, is that the Justice Department didn't do anything about Michael Brown. It didn't do anything about Trayvon Martin. It didn't do anything about Eric Garner. It didn't do anything about any of these heinous murders that happen many times on camera in front of our very eyes. We had those two on tape. I am sure that this whole episode will be scuttled by the Justice Department just like it was by President Obama's Justice Department, which was probably stronger than anything Trump has put there. His Justice Department has done this, written amicus briefs on the behalf of Comcast, (laughs) which... That's right, opposed Byron Allen in giving him his due credit for his network and putting it on Comcast systems. This Justice Department has tried to scuttle affirmative action by using Asians to go up against Harvard and yell to say affirmative action is no longer needed. This Justice Department once had Jeff Sessions at its head And he is known to be a racist. And let's not mince words here. While this president feigns to be mildly interested in what's going on with George Floyd, let's be clear, he's a racist himself in all of his past conduct. Cross-apply all the past shows that I've done about this man being a racist and his racist comments. He doesn't care about Floyd and neither does his Justice Department. He doesn't, and we all know it. None of us are being fooled by this or your statement, Mr. President. Now, here's the part where Joe Biden tries to look presidential and tell us that he's going to do a better job than when he was in office with President Obama. He wants to throw money at the problem. Well, you know what? If you're throwing money, you might as well throw reparations in there too, Joe. Look, I don't believe Joe Biden, Mr. I couldn't figure out how to go south in Delaware and join the people fighting the Civil War on the Confederate side. I don't think that he has any truth in anything he's saying. He's the guy who just last week said you ain't black unless you vote for him. I, I, I That they're going to put your ass in chains if you don't vote for him or the Democrats. This is a guy who has said desegregation is not something that he supports and looked at busing as something that he opposed. He fraternized with racists, and he decided to go after Anita Hill. I'm not going to let you forget the record here, making sure this is on. It doesn't get any better with these folks. It only gets better when we take action into our own hands and understand the day of reckoning is the day that we bring and not the day that just automatically it just automatically appears and comes to us and lays down in our lap and then just gets better. This is what I'm talking about. We are the answer that we have been waiting for. We are. See, there are a lot of people who have even floated Kaepernick and saying this is the reason why Kaepernick kneeled. He kneeled and that was offensive, but this man kneeling on the neck of a black man is not as offensive. This is why he was kneeling. I thought Kaepernick kneeling was still a mealy mouth protest of the NFL itself. I didn't think it went far enough. I thought it was too peaceful. I thought it was too go along to get along. This is the same old tactic of Martin Luther King. Let's let them beat our ass on television until they get that we're human and give us civil rights. I don't agree with this tactic. I don't agree with this turn the other cheek. I agree with the tactics of Malcolm X. And I'm talking about pre-conversion, 
I believe that violence solves problems. This is the only way. It is the only way to get their attention. And it's controversial. People and lives will be lost, but I'm telling you violence is something that we have no matter what happens. Let me just say this to you. And I know you're saying, Rob, Rob, I, I, I don't agree with violence. Let me just say this to you. I'm just going to remind you of what France Fanon says about violence. Famous psychotherapist France Fanon said about violence. Anytime black people show up, it is violence to those in a white supremacist superstructure. We are violent just by walking into the building. W.E.B. Du Bois and France Fanon talk about when a black man comes in, reason goes out. This is the issue. And so when a black man comes into any situation, which is why some people are so dumbfounded as to why we're talking about a woman with a cell phone and a dog in the middle of a park. Anytime we're talking about a white man and a cell phone who's being recorded telling blacks that they can't work out there. Anytime we're talking about video of a black man going in and supposedly having a forged $20 bill and it ends in death. Anytime black folks show up, it is violent. And anytime black folks even talk about their deaths as a result of this, it is considered as violence because violent, the word also makes up the core definition of violation. Violence and violation are the same type of word. And the root of violence is saying that there is a violation of policy. And when we say, and we stand up and say, you know what, I'm gonna sit here and tell you that you need to put a leash on that damn dog. When we sit there and we say, we deserve to be here because we live in the same building as you. That is a violation. And then we're calling out racism for being what it is. We are correcting the white supremacist superstructure. We're destroying the order. So we're already being violent just by saying those things. When Kaepernick takes a knee, it is violence just because he disrupts the white supremacist system. It is violence because he's saying there's a violation of me and people that look like me. And damn it, I'm not going to let you play this game until you recognize that I understand that what you're doing to my people is wrong. That is already being violent. We don't have to, to wage a weapon or do anything else beyond that. It's just our words and our actions and the showing up that is already violent. So we might as well give these bastards what they want and give them true violence since they already assert just our appearance as being violent. Making sure this is on, again, I'm going to say to you, this is why I'm unapologetically not a nonviolent Negro. This is the reason why I say violence solves problems. Franz Fanon talked about violence being the only way because white people see that you addressing them and saying that there's a violation in their conduct in itself is violent. And it is the way that they've gotten everything that they have through colonization, through slavery, through oppression and continued subjugation and stratification of groups. This is what I'm telling you. They're not going to concede anything. As Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand, never has, never will. This phrase was made popular by the likes of Malcolm X, who didn't say it first, but took it from Frederick Douglass. It is time for us to understand the only way we're going to get what we want, the only way we're going to end this white supremacist superstructure, the only way we're going to be able to mend fences is to break some damn fences. The only way we're going to be able to get a seat at the table is to upend the table. The only way we're going to be able to be heard is to scream. The only thing we're going to be able to do to bring these people to the table to act right is to give them a dose 
of acting wrong so they act right so they get it keep kicking their ass keep kicking it until they get it keep kicking it until they understand your pain the pain that you should have communicated some time ago back when they were willing to step over the dead bodies of all of those COVID-19 victims to go back to work, when they went into their state houses and threatened their damn governors, when they still threatened their governors in Kentucky with effigies of the governor on the lawn of the governor's mansion, just as of yesterday, keep your foot on their neck. You should have kept it there when Aubrey died down in the lynching in Brunswick, Georgia. You should have kept it there when you had Breonna Taylor shot dead in her house when she was trying to get some sleep helping people come back from COVID-19. You should have kept it there because that's the only thing that they understand. I said it and I meant every single word, not walking a single word back. You need to be logging on all weekend long all weekend long for continuing updates of all of these stories all of these stories on the website you need to be listening 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 to the show if you're not subscribing get a subscription at readingnewsreview.com on the world wide web you can also get all the headlines there at readingnewsreview.com on the world wide web i just put up the new basquiat shirts they're also on the website at readingnewsreview.com they're there for you to buy if you listen to me, if you share this show with others and they subscribe, have them make sure they tell that they got the recommendation for this from you and I will get you a shirt. I will get you a shirt of your choosing. Not a nonviolent Negro is the one I hope you want. And that will be free to you, shipped to you for free. And I thank all of you for your support, of course, at the website and with the radio show again subscribe readynewsreview.com to the show and to the website and if someone is recommended by you let me know and you will get a free t-shirt of your choosing and that is shipped to you directly while supplies last guys i've had fun but i gotta run if i'm not here i'm there there is readingnewsreview.com, the world web, reading like Otis, sitting on the dock of the bay, baby. Newsreview.com, the world web. Yes, it's my family. No, it's not my money, which means I'm back your way. Monday through Friday after 4 p.m. with more of Reading News Review Unrestricted. Thanks again for listening to Reading News Review Unrestricted podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe right underneath my picture right here on YouTube to this channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Click away, click away, click away. And you can also find me on Twitter at Rob Redding. That's at Rob Redding on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook at Rob Redding. That's forward slash Redding News Review. You can find me on Snapchat as well, Rob Redding. And you can find me on Instagram, Robert Redding, simply on Instagram, Robert Redding, on LinkedIn, and of course, most other social media. But make sure you subscribe on this YouTube. Hit subscribe to get all the pressing news that you need to know. And keep coming to ReadingNewsReview.com for all of the